Invitational Series. We caught up with the globe-trotting duo during one of the rare moments of relaxation that punctuate their otherwise hectic lives. Chris, Martin, your escapades have taken you all over the world, but you do have some roots in terms of your creature adventuring right here in Vermont. Tell us about that. Well, our earliest creature adventures happened here. Uh, we spent every summer since I was five and Chris was three camping out up in northern Vermont. And basically what we did every day was wander around looking for frogs and snakes and deer and whatever we could find. And porcupines. The dog, <laughs> our pet St. Bernard, always got into trouble with the porcupine. Yeah, but she, <laughs> she always knew where to find it. You know, so we just follow her through the woods and she'd lead us to a porcupine. And we'd be able to check it out and saw her little bones and get a finger in the bag. You know, so it was that. Those are some of the first things we did for sure. So you take this childhood experience and your education as a biologist and a zoologist and you package it into this wonderful show. What are your goals for the show? What are you trying to tell the audience or teach the audience? Well, what Martin and I want to do is personally meet all the creatures that share the planet with us and introduce viewers, kids, adults, everybody we can to the incredible animals that we share the planet with. That, that's our mission. Yeah, and you know, we hope, aside from that, that, going out and showing the people all the amazing creatures that we that people, and kids especially, will will say, wow, these animals. Zoologist and a zoologist, and you package it into this wonderful show. What are your goals for the show? What are you trying to tell the audience or teach the audience? Well, what Martin and I want to do is personally meet all the creatures that share the planet with us and introduce viewers, kids, adults, everybody we can to the incredible animals that we share the planet with. That, that's our mission. Yeah, and you know, we hope a side effect of that, of going out and showing the people all the amazing creatures that we share the planet with, that people, and kids especially, will, will say, wow, these animals are so neat, I want to make sure they stick around. So maybe the show will do something to help endangered species. But then, interestingly, out of that was our primary motivation. But the show's been on the air for a year now. We spent a lot of time traveling around, doing book signings, meeting kids. And one of the things that's developed out of that is we we've, we've really become interested in, in helping kids realize their dreams. Because Chris and I, we started out, you know, dreaming, wow, it would be great if we could travel around the world, meet animals, learn things about animals. And so we just set out and did it. And we want to, um, by our example show kids that whatever they're interested in, they can pursue that and make a life out of their the interest that they really love. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the show, because if kids or adults, and I should say their parents uh, haven't seen the show, it's very exciting. It's uh, It's got a lot of entertainment value. It's very educational. It's high energy. You guys get in some very daring situations. At least, like, have there been any situations that you that you thought, hmm, too daring. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything we do is out of the comfort zone. Yeah. We want to get them in there with those animals. We want to experience life from their perspective. So that's why when we're out on the African savanna and we're observing hyenas who just finished eating from a trail, they go directly over to a mud hole and stick their entire heads in the mud. You know, so we wanted to know why and figure it out. So we went over, stuck our heads in the mud, and we know that we realized that reason they're doing that is because they want to um, cover up the blood on their face so that bugs won't come and land on them and bother them. They lay eggs in their fur. And so so that's why we're hanging out with hyenas in Africa, which some people might see as being really dangerous. But if you understand the animals and their behavior, you can hang out with animals without getting, without really being in danger. Because you can respond to um, their, their responses and their reactions to you. You understand it, you can hang out with them. But one of the things we didn't do, because it was too dangerous, <laughs> was take our raft. We had to cross a river, the Samara River, and we were going to do it in a raft, but we saw this boat that we knew. Hippos are really territorial. So before going across, going across the river, we 
We had our hippo test dummy. His name was Ken. Yeah. And we sent him down the river at first. But then, you know, we got him all ready for safari. He's all dressed up in safari gear and everything. <laughs> Just to test the waters. And um, it actually happened that the hippos attacked Ken and the rat. So we knew we had to find a prey. Oh, it was like when, <laughs> when, when the hippo attacked Ken. Ken was just the bed where I would crawl so we could get him. And the hippo attacked and took the raft and Ken and shook it like a terrier shakes a rat. You know, and Ken's head flew off and everything. And so from that creature experiment, we learned how territorial hippos are. And like I said, let's find the bridge. <laughs> In watching the show, you guys really put yourselves in interesting circumstances. Again, one time you're right uh, off the branch from a leopard, or you're, you're going down in the city sewers searching for alligators, <laughs> the mythical alligators. Have you ever felt, I mean, it just, it's, it's so great that you never feel any uh, anticipation about doing these things? Oh, well, you know, when we did, when we went swimming with the sharks, for example, we were pretty nervous about going down and swimming with the sharks. You know, you've heard all the stories you hear about the sharks. Uh, but we've done a lot of reading about sharks, and really, out of all of the 360 species of sharks in the world, only five see humans as potential prey. You know, so we went, we went to decide to go swimming with a species that didn't, didn't see humans as prey. <laughs> the Caribbean reef shark, as long as we didn't eat the eggs, is a prey. And we were able to hang out with them, and it was a wonderful, peaceful, Peaceful, otherworldly experience for me. Now, also in the show, you have other other characters or other people in the show that. Oh, can I just add one? Absolutely. You know, it's something when we were with the shark and it's going down and down. It uh, it was the Caribbean reef shark, and he said something that we go and we know from our experiences in our living at home. And he said that you're more likely to get injured by a cow. I did want to talk a little bit about the format of the show, too, because you have other uh, characters within the show. What parts do they play in delivering the messages that you want to get out of the show? Well, we have a great character named Allison that you mentioned. She hangs out at the Tree Tree Club, which is our home base. And she is a wonderfully smart girl who likes animals and wants to learn more and more about animals as much as she can. So we see her as basically a surrogate to the audience. She's she's our audience out there. Smart kids who want to know more. And Dad, basically, what, what she does is what we call all the kids out there with me. She's researching animals. Well, she's reading books. She's into computers and getting information. But she's also doing the technical step of going out there and doing her own creature testing. And then as she starts, you know, like, and like kids, they can't go flying to Africa. things that come out of the show and the things we're most happy about is that kids are writing us letters and talking to us and we see them saying that they're going out on their own creature adventures to meet animals in the backyard, to go on imaginary adventures to Africa and the Great Barrier Reef. Well, in terms of next steps, you guys are already working on a show, a new creature show, which is going to appeal to a different audience. What's up with that? Well, after Crutch Green and Crutch Canary, we realized that we're being designed so that we can appeal to guys like yourself. But we realize that you guys seem to have gotten a very different range of viewers. Adults were watching the show. We were in the books on it once and we started looking up and seeing that face right there. We saw knees. And it was a guy from the local fire department who said, hey, I just want to let you know, Dad's station number 13, get ready at 430. Put down our cards and watch Dad's creatures. <laughs> but it's nice to know somebody is watching. We're going to be able to figure it out. Uh, and, you know, the show's so fast-paced, a lot of these things attracted to us, we said, attracted to the animals, give us access to these books to design a new show. The first should, wildlife show ever for the preschool. And we've done that. It's called Zombie Zoo. We're in production. We're going to have 40 half hours on PBS. 
to listen. I know we had a tight window to get to land here in Vermont. We really appreciate it. Chris, Martin, Pratt, thanks so much for